Well, hello everyone, and welcome back to another episode of Running the Gauntlet. Today, we are continuing through Phase 3, and we are approaching the end of the gauntlets that are located within here. Actually, today is the midpoint. And that brings us to the Level 90 Bigger Problems Gauntlet Run. This one's pretty intensive. It has five different phases and some unique challenges to boot. So strap in, because we are going to go through what you need to keep in mind as you take this on yourself, and what you need to do to get the four clear conditions as well. So let's jump right into the action, shall we? First off, we have a fight against Ultimo. And personally, I think that this fight really drags in the context of a gauntlet run or a rift run because you start down here at the base of the tower and you are required to go through this elevator sequence which just takes a long time it's a really cool immersive moment in the story quest it's not my favorite aspect to have added in here regardless it's the fight that we have so you've got to keep it in mind now, as we're coming up this elevator shaft, because, well, there's not a whole lot of exciting activity that's going to happen until we get to the top, one thing you do need to keep in mind, with this gauntlet in particular, you only have the use of your extreme attacks once. They do not recharge, they do not replenish until the cycle resets, and so once you detonate one extreme attack, you will not be able to do that until you get back to the start again. So be very choosy about when you use it also known as don't use your extreme attack within this leg of the gauntlet. And I'll explain why in a little bit, because it's very pertinent to one of the clear conditions that we have. The only other thing you need to keep in mind with this particular leg is that yes, EX attacks will deal increased damage, but so are all of the other attacks that you're doing in this particular leg as well. So when you do end up using your extreme attacks, they will be more efficient, they will be better than they otherwise would be, but you really don't want to waste it in, in, in inopportune moments. So we're just about to the top of Avengers Tower here, and that's really going to help us out when it comes to finishing out the fight or finishing out this leg of the gauntlet. And it's pretty standard. You're going to need to run through the turret sequence four different times in order to take down Ultimo. So let's move on and talk about what I meant by don't use your extreme attacks in this fight. First off, the only way to deal damage to Ultimo is by using these suppression cannons up here at the top of Avengers Tower. So you're not doing yourself any favors by using the attack in this leg of the fight. And though in theory you can use it in the segments like this one where you have Ultron bots coming in, it's not going to be as efficient, especially where you only get one use of your extreme attacks in the five different phases of this gauntlet, because you're looking to deal three million damage or more with your extreme attack detonations, which yes, you can accomplish when you run the gauntlet multiple times, but this would be the most inopportune place to expand your extreme attacks by far. You also need to make sure that you can get through the gauntlet and you're going to want to be familiar with what that's going to entail as well. So you might want to do a run or two to get some intel, not on this phase, but on some of the other phases that are going to come a little bit later. So we're moving right along. We've got Ultimo down to the second phase here, which means that we're going to want to detonate a few more of these attacks. The other thing you should keep in mind, which you've probably noticed on the screen, is that we have a couple of the cursed opponents that pop in that can cause the curse of the vampire aspect to be added to members of your team which is good if you are really desperately in need of some health recovery but it can be detrimental if you are not finding yourself in that type of a position for example here you see that my thanos ultimate is getting very very low and so what i'm going to end up doing is setting up a ep and health recovery orb with his third ability Right like that, we can move right along back to taking down Ultimo. And the other thing that you need to be cautious of when making runs like this is you can use your turrets to target onto the different Ultron sentries that are flying about, but it is going to cut into your overall damage output to Ultimo and inhibit how quickly you can bring him down. Now you can get him pretty close to the end of his health bar, 
but there's always going to be that fourth phase that takes you through the remainder of the health that's there. So take a moment, set up some attacking areas, and right here, this is probably my favorite use of Thanos Ultimate in this run of the gauntlet. If you fully charge that health and EP recovery area, it will not only help restore that, but it will also draw the opponents in, which you can then use to detonate the and any of his other abilities, preferably his second one, as it has a large area of effect and will stagger out those enemies as they are clustered together. So just like that, we've got Ultimo taken out, and we can move on to the second phase of this gauntlet, which is pretty straightforward, actually. It's just a fight against the Infinity Sentinel, and what you'll need to be cautious of with this one is the small Sentinels that spawn in and you need to fight against. They do have the electrical attribute to them, which means that you run the risk of becoming staggered out by that ability effect as you fight into them, especially with my team, because really the only characters that I have that have ranged capabilities are one or two abilities off of Miles Morales, a few abilities off of Gambit, and then one or two with Thanos Ultimate as well. So just keep that in mind as you're looking to take these guys out, as it may be beneficial to have a projectile-based character or a character that has projectile capabilities on your team. But other than that, the only other danger in this area is that your HP will slowly drain over the course of the fight, but you are going to be able to replenish and gain bits of your HP back as the fight progresses because you are able to siphon back a portion of the damage dealt as health back to your teammates, which is always kind of nice to see. Right like that, we have the Infinity Sentinel taken down, and I am using more of my abilities by the members of my team at this stage to deal that damage. This could be a really good time to use your extreme attacks, especially where you have uh, one of them to detonate through the entire run here. I would only recommend using one in this section if you're going to use an extreme attack at all during this leg of the gauntlet. So keep that in mind and be wary of it as we continue. The other thing that's nice about this one is you do have the sentinel cores that drop in that allow you to further chip away at the infinity sentinel stagger bar and as soon as we get him down one more time we're going to be able to just take him out and move through this phase especially with uh, Infinity Thanos uh, dealing some damage there in the background and then we go ahead and finish him off with a couple of synergy attacks between Wolverine and Miles Morales which you don't have to use them on your team but I've found them highly effective with really any run that I've done in my casual playthrough. Phase 3 of this gauntlet is going to be a fight against Surto. And I don't particularly like the fight against Surtur, but at least it's high octane and action packed. He limits you to a very finite area of movement, has large moves that sweep throughout the area. So I don't like this one because it can be a little bit obtrusive, but on the converse side, I really like this fight because it really tests your core mechanics of how the fight mechanics are meant to work. In this fight, you have increased attack damage on everything except basic attacks. So make sure that you are taking advantage of your synergies and abilities as you walk into this. And this could be an okay place to use maybe one of your extreme attacks. I still highly recommend that you should hold on to them until the last two portions of this gauntlet, which we'll get into as those come a little bit closer. So I'll let the rest of this sort of fight play out while we talk about the two missing requirements from this fight. The first, that we haven't talked about, or this would be the third criteria, is earning a score of 180,000. That's very simple. You run the gauntlet for long enough and you're going to get it. You can probably even get it in your first cold run of that gauntlet. And I like this one because similar to the other gauntlets that we've looked at in Phase 3 so far, is it gives you an alternate costume for one of the Marvel Knights. This time around, it's Moon Knight, and it's a really cool black more of a dark gray costume with some accents in a whitish silver color, and I really like that one. The other criteria is defeating 250 enemies. The phases that are going to help the most with that are actually the first and last stages of this gauntlet run, so you'll want to run it two, maybe three times, and you'll be able to grab that. 
But we now find ourselves in the fourth leg of this gauntlet run, which is the run killer if you are not careful. Dormammu is a very technical fight that you need to be cautious of, especially with this added quirk of your HP draining over time. He has the ability, unfortunately, to really stall you out as you are fighting him because his first phase, it's fairly straightforward. But as you get into his second and then his third final phase, he has a protective barrier that he conjures up in front of him to really prevent you from dealing any sort of damage to him. You can still deal damage to some of his cronies that run around or some of the minions that he summons in to help you out with that, but it's trying and you're really going to suffer a little bit. This is one of the main reasons that I like having Wolverine on the team because yes, my health is constantly draining throughout the fight, but Wolverine is going to passively regenerate some of that back as he fights through, which kind of helps him out in terms of his viability. So you see we're detonating a couple of these crystals, these cores, to take out the protective barrier there. And with this final one being charged up, we can just barely avoid the large flame detriment attack from Dormammu here. And that's really what we're looking to do. You'll also notice that I've now used two of my extreme attacks. I used Gambits a little bit earlier and I just finished off with the Wolverines. What we're really looking to do here is make sure that we can get Dormammu down to that third and final phase because we don't want to waste any more time here where our health is going to consistently drain down. Especially because there are some times where he does not summon in extra cronies to help you out especially if there's a lot of crystals hanging around. So you don't want to be reliant on waiting for these crystals to charge up by the elemental orbs that are summoned in, mainly the fire and electric ones on either side of the stage here, because they're wildly unpredictable and you're going to have to deal with a lot of hit Dormammu's heavier hitting moves as we go through on that. And we've got one or two final attacks that we're sending out to these opponents here. You saw there that I didn't quite get the crystal picked up before Dormammu did his big flame detonation. And Gambit's really suffering from it. You can see that he's just down on the smallest little sliver of health. But we do finally get that crystal charged up, throw it into Dormammu's face, and you actually do regain a little bit of health at the end of that segment, which is really helpful. The fifth and final wave of this gauntlet and the fight in general, is actually the one that I would highly recommend that if you can hold on to your extreme attacks, this one is going to be the best one for it. Because there's no other quirks to this fight, you've just got to take out Sandman, and later on we have the Destroyer Armor that gets summoned in. And because the Destroyer Armor is present and the way his boss fight works, you will also have a couple of minions, mainly AIM soldiers, that are brought into the fight that are charged with some rainbow ice away, which they then drop and you can use to temporarily enhance your team's attack movements. And that includes your extreme attacks. So take full advantage of those attacks as they are being souped up by the crystals because you're just going to deal excessive amounts of damage with those crystals active and then bolster your overall score for the extreme attack requirement of that 3 million or more attack damage. You can probably get that criteria in two runs if you play it right and you get the damage put out in the right condition, but the other thing that you need to keep in mind is, well, you may just not have enough enemies nearby in order to meet that damage cap or that damage threshold. So you'll see here that we have the destroyer armor taken down and we are now throwing in a couple of our extreme attacks with Thanos ultimate there. That did a good chunk to the destroyer himself. I really would have liked to have been able to done more to the destroyer armor in particular. And right here we've got Miles. He's the last extreme attack that we have not detonated. And as we have his Venom Shock go off, we get the Destroyer down to basically the last little sliver of health. And with a few heavy attacks from the Rainbow Iso infused Thanos Ultimate, we're going to be fine and we can just focus on getting Sandman down. Now as soon as you have the Destroyer down, you are no longer going to have these aim soldiers that spawn in with the crystal effects. So be aware of that as you seek to take on the remainder of this boss fight as again that's really going to help your cause in taking him down a lot quicker right here we get a couple of final attacks in with thanos ultimate that finishes out this fight 
And that's really all you need to know for this gauntlet run. So thanks again for watching. Feel free to drop a like on the video if you enjoyed or found it helpful or informative. And don't forget to subscribe for more daily content. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you tomorrow.